This is the BBC. This podcast is supported by advertising outside the UK. BBC Sounds. Music, radio, podcasts. A lake. A lake. Are you sure she wasn't just remembering something? We used to go to that campsite. In, where was no, it? No, but there was so much detail, though, Bernie. Like, she was really seeing it. Naming the plants and everything. I swear she could actually see this lake. She's on the tenth floor. It's the point I'm making. <laughs> she has no idea where she is. How have we let it get this bad? The lake sounds like a happy place. They do say that if they're in a happy place, leave them there. They were happy holidays, weren't they, on that site? She can't live on her own anymore. I know, I do know that. I just don't know what to do about that. Well, I can sleep over Sunday, Monday and Tuesday nights. Right. Can you do the other nights? Can you square that with Tony? What? Nothing. I, I mean, that's great. She's terrified we'll put her in a home. That's why I've been keeping quiet about it. Every time she sees you, she's terrified you're going to send her away. Why would you think that? About me? I don't know. She looked after us. It's our turn to look after her. She never abandoned us. Why would we abandon her? Actually, she did abandon us. She had a breakdown. She went to a rest home to recover. For two years. Yeah, well, things were different. And no one told us what was going on, so we thought she'd just run off. But she hadn't. But we thought she had, when it mattered. It was the way they did things at that time. At the time, they used to write a lot of letters. She could have written letters. If you don't want to do this... I'll do Wednesday to Friday, and maybe we can alternate Saturdays. What about Tony? He's... Ten minutes away if he needs me. Is he okay? We manage. What about Eric? Oh, Eric's fine. He can come over the odd time. It's different. Eric is really well. I know Tony has problems. Like I said, we manage. You've known about Mum for a while. It's different for me. I see her every day. I don't notice the change as clear as you do. We have to do this. We have to try, at least. We'll get a care package. We'll do our best. Oh, Buttermere. Oh. <laughs> the caravan site was on Buttermere. <laughs> and it was happy. Yeah. Look who's here, Mum. It's Terry. Hello. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm going to stay over, Mum, for a few days. What do you think of that? Won't be in the way, will I? No. I'm glad you're here. I've got loads to tell you. <laughs> who's the other one with you? It's me, Mum. Bernie. I never see Bernie anymore. Just every second day. I'm going now, Mum. I'll see you out. You got all your bits? Yeah, I'm set. <sighs> You're definitely OK. She's my mother. They say if they're somewhere happy, leave them there. They say you should talk about it. Get them to see it in their mind's eye. Help them to stay there. That's what I do. Thanks. <sighs> Love you. <laughs> We can do this. Yeah. Oh, here come the swans. Aren't they lovely? Yeah, they're lovely. Where they land? How did they do that? Barely a ripple. So elegant. Your grandfather always liked to count them. Well, we could count them together if you liked. It was Dad, by the way. Dad used to count them. I know who counted them. That's not what I'm trying to tell you. I love the breeze, where it makes little ripples like that, and the boats bobbing about. Boats? Yeah, you know, boats. I don't see any boats. Where are you seeing boats? What kind of boats? Well, I just thought there were boats, that's all. Well, it doesn't matter. You should get your eyes examined if you're seeing things. Pass us my shoes. We'd better get going. Going where? We don't have to go. We can just sit here and enjoy the view. Oh, look, the swans are... Where are my shoes? We need to get going. Don't worry about your shoes. The tide's definitely coming the Lakes in. don't have tides, Mum. Wave, then flood, whatever. We can't stay here. Where are the others? Where are my sisters? Sisters? She never had any sisters. Well, I know she never had any sisters. That's why we never had any aunties. <laughs> what time will you be here in the morning? Eight, OK? Eight fifteen, if I'm honest. Half past, if the lift's not working. <laughs> I don't know what to do when she's agitated like this. She was obviously worried about something. She was worried about the tide, you said, but there was no tide, so there's nothing to worry about. But like you said, if they're in a happy place, leave them. But if they're upset, obviously you shouldn't leave them. But how do you get her out of there? She always liked to sing song. We could try a sing song. 
And sometimes I read to her, that's good. A good story. Oh, Dad's Sherlock Holmes is in the kitchen. She always liked a ghost story. I could do that. Uh, I read to her the other day. It was good. Telly and radio, she doesn't take them in. But if you're reading to her, she's there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> you're both in the same place. Prayers work too, by the way. She remembers all her prayers. I think they take her back to, you know, Legion of Mary. They take her back to when she was herself. The professor was young, neat and precise in his speech. I like the sound of him. My friends have been making me take up golf this term, he said. Well, he shouldn't listen to them, should he? You don't think? No. Waste of time and stupid clothes. Is he going to wear the stupid golf clothes? Well, let's find out, shall we? Parkins, said his neighbour, if you're going to Cromer, I wish you would take a look at the site of the old Knights Templar Church for me. Trouble. There's going to be trouble there. Do you think? Shall we see? This is like old times, isn't it? In Buttermere, we used to do ghost stories. This is going to be a ghost story, isn't it? Well, we've got to keep going to find out. Certainly, said Parkins. Big mistake. Read on. Is this going to have seaside in it? It is. Shall I read on? Yes. I know you're trying to shut me up. I'm not trying to shut you up at all. We're enjoying a story together. I'm trying to tell you something and you just keep talking. Mum, if there's something you want to tell me... I've forgotten what it is now. Just get on with the story. Yeah, if there's something on your mind, there's Mum. There's nothing on my mind. Go on with the story. If you will describe to me whereabouts the site is... I will do my best to give you an idea of the lie of the land. There's nothing more to tell, but as you can imagine, the professor's views on certain points are less clear than they used to be. The spectacle of a scarecrow in a field late on a winter's afternoon has cost him more than one sleepless night. What do you think? Look, in a book. It didn't really happen. He's coming back. I can hear him. No, he's not coming back. He's not coming back. It was just a story. I was reading you a story. Like you used to read me stories, Mum. Oh, I'm so sorry. What's that? It's just a duvet. That's what he said in that story. And then it turned out to be, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Don't leave me. I have no intention of leaving you. You're not going to lock me up. No one's going to lock you up. I'm going to sleep here tonight, in this chair, so you're not on your own. I'll make you some hot milk, all right? And we'll say our night prayers, eh? Like back in the day. It's all right. Lord, now let your servant depart in peace, according, according to, to thy, thy word. word. For, For my, my eyes, eyes have seen the salvation, salvation which, which you have prepared, prepared before the, the face, face of, of the peoples. peoples. You can't park there, by the way. You need to move your car or it'll get towed away. Mum, I haven't got a car. Look, I said I'm staying. I said I'm sleeping in this chair, so I'm sleeping in this chair. What about the girls? My sisters. Where will they go if you're going to take up all the room? If your sisters come, I'll move. In the meantime, night-night. You to read her a ghost story. She loved ghost stories. Tales of the unexpected. They weren't ghost stories. They were mysteries. Oh, I'm really late, aren't I? The lift is dodgy, by the oh. way. I had to use the stairs. Now, they are scary. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Eric was coming. Next time. I never expected her to be scared. I've never seen her scared. Yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of things about her we haven't seen before. Including her fictitious sisters. Oh, the sisters. Well, maybe they're not fictitious. Maybe they're in a family secret. We should check out the census or whatever. Maybe they're hiding under the bed waiting to jump out. She wants to tell us something. Something's on her mind, I'm sure of it. Is that you, Billy? No, Mum. It's only me, Bernie. You all right, Mum? He's still watching us. He's in the corner, see? Who's watching us? Shh! Say nothing. Pretend you're not aware. He can watch us all he likes. He'll soon get bored of us, won't he? Nothing to see here. Move on. The other one brought him here. Who's the other one? Terry. She let him in. 
It was on the beach at Cromer. It was a story, Mum, a ghost story. She read you a story. We need to go and miss our boat. We don't want to be stranded here. Mum, where are you? Logan Tower, flat four, tenth floor. And who lives there? We do. Right, so we don't need a boat, do we? We're already home. Why does everyone try to shut me up? I've got things to say. Every time I open my mouth, it's questions. If you've got something to say, I want to hear it. I really do. Would anyone like a cup of tea? Maybe some toast? I think I've got a cake, if anyone would like some. <laughs> That's a thing that drives me crackers. She won't ask for anything. Oh, if she's hungry, she offers to cook. Even though she knows she hasn't been out of bed for months. If she wants a cup of tea, it's, would anyone like a cup of tea? Oh, she does that, <laughs> so she doesn't have to break the habit of a lifetime and actually say thank you for something. <laughs> oh, I, I tried to have a poke around to find out about these sisters. What do you mean, these sisters? There were no sisters. Yeah, I think you're right. You think I'm right? She's our mum. We know she doesn't have sisters. I just checked a few census returns and... <sighs> she's definitely trying to tell us something. Well, then she'll tell us in time. It's like there's a signal, but... Loads of interference. If I could just find the right frequency. Except Mum's not a radio and the interference is her own memories. But maybe it's like one of those puzzles where they tell the story in pictures, like emojis. She is communicating, but with pictures. Very seriously. But listen, the same things keep coming up. A boat, a lake, flowers. When you're with her, are you listening? God, no, of course not. Drive you mad. I wasn't listening when she was supposedly compass mentis. All she talked about for the last five years is whether it was bin day or not. I'm mostly just fiddling with my phone. Exactly. We're sitting in there with her, in death's waiting room, and this huge thing is happening to her. And we're not paying attention. I want to pay attention. Good luck with that, then. I don't know why you don't just put her in a home. Go on. Actually, some of the homes are very good. I've been looking... Uh, oh, have you? Have you? Yeah, of course you have. Of course I have. We can't do this forever. Oh, she's going to live forever, is she? No, she's not. But what? I don't know how long I can bear to watch it. It's cruel. She can't do anything for herself. She doesn't know where she is. She doesn't know what's going on. That's not Mum in there. It is Mum. That's the point. That's Mum, and she's got unfinished business. She's trying to tell us something. I know. I just... <sighs> what? What if it's something we don't want to hear? Hello. Terry was here just now, for a change. She looks terrible, by the way. I don't think he's looking after her. I'm Terry, Mum. And I'm here three days a week. I get confused. Yeah. Would anyone like a cup of tea? Yeah, good idea. I shall be happy to give you any other details which might interest you. And so concludes the case of the Silver Blaze. Oh, I love Sherlock Holmes. We should light the lamps. Girls will never be able to find this place in the fog. The fog was in the story, Mum. Don't need to worry about it. Which girls? That's me. What is? Sherlock Holmes. Your Sherlock Holmes? Feels like it. Wake up every morning and my life's a bloody mystery. Why's my bed in the living room? Where are my sisters? I spend the morning looking for clues, trying to make sense of it. If I ask you a question, you lie to me? I don't lie to you, Mum. Where are my sisters? I'm not sure you've actually got any sisters, Mum. You never mentioned them to me before. Sherlock Holmes and the case of the Vanishing Sisters. Let's say our night prayers, shall we? She really said that? About Sherlock Holmes? Yeah. Oh, that's heartbreaking. I hadn't thought of it. What an effort it must be to, you know, place yourself in the morning. Mm. To figure out where you are, even. When this first started, she had a fall, remember, and mm. she ended up in hospital. She swore blind she'd been kidnapped. I think that was the pyjamas they gave her. Uh, and when I tried to persuade her, I was in on it. But then, later on the same day, she said she was on a coach tour of Snowdonia. I think that was the trolleys. She keeps trying new ideas until she finds one that works. I mean, it's creative. It's heroic. 
Maybe we shouldn't begrudge the imaginary sisters. They seem to be having a party last night, mm. the imaginary sisters. I was in bed on the phone to Eric. Oh, just ringing to say goodnight. Wish you were here. No, no, I've got my book. I'll read myself to sleep. What about you? No screens at bedtime. It's bad for you. Oh, better go. I think I can hear her calling. Mum? Mum? Very quiet in here, all of a sudden. I say good night again. Keep it down, eh? She's listening at the door. <laughs> thing is, when she was talking, I swear I heard someone answer her. Oh, Terry, you need a break. We all need a break. Not going to get one. I never bloody expected to be scared. I grew up here. Never felt uneasy for a second. Mm. Last night, I'm lying there, thinking about the stairways and how they go on forever and who could be lurking there. And then this cackling from the next room. If she's laughing, she's happy. She's probably walking around Paris in her sleep. Oh, yeah, well, that's perfect, isn't it? I'm lying there listening to the lifts cranking up and down and footsteps on the stairs, and she's driving through Paris in a sports car <laughs> with a warm wind in her hair. <laughs> Eric's coming with me next time. I'll be all right next time. Just, you know, bad night. Yeah. Eric, <laughs> I haven't seen you in ages. Oh, it's good to see you. <sighs> you know she'll probably think you're her grandma or Angela Rippon or something. Oh, you know, my dad went the same way. Insisted I'd come about the dreams. Uh, she's in here. <laughs> Hello? Who's that? Oh, hi, Mum, it's me and Eric. Eric? How are you? <laughs> haven't seen you in ages. Hmm. She's been keeping you to herself. <laughs> Who can blame her? How's your father? Oh, I'm afraid he passed away a few years back. Of course he did. God mm. rest his soul. I was very sorry to hear that. Lovely man. He suffered from dementia, didn't he? He did. Terrible fate to befall a man like him. Losing your marbles like that. So cruel. He stayed very cheerful, right to the end. Well, that's a blessing. The girls insist I'm getting dementia myself. Really? I take them at their word, you have to, don't you? But between you and me, I've not experienced any of the symptoms as yet. Really? No, nah, no. Nah. Sharp as ever, as you can see. Bernie took me to Chroma for the weekend. We had a smashing time. Did she really? Oh, yeah. We had a smashing time. We had dress crab and a walk on the beach. And then I settled them down and told them a story. <laughs> they love it when I tell them a story. Don't you goes? Bernie? Huh? Did we get a present for Eric? Oh, honestly, would you ever think there was anything wrong? Entirely on it. Except she thinks she's been to Chroma. It was in a story I read her. Whenever there's a new face... She jabs up her game. <laughs> Dad was the same. He'd be all, I've been doing a bit of supply teaching. <laughs> Especially on the phone. Totally convincing. Do you get that? Well, no one ever rings. Sunday to Wednesday, it's really just me and her. Did she say anything to you while I was in the kitchen? I mean, anything, you know, odd. Terry, she's got dementia. She never stops talking and every single thing she says is odd. me. It's Terry. Calm down. Stop. Shush. What do you mean, shush? Well, you're screaming. It wasn't me. But, <laughs> you know who the culprit would be? That soldier who follows us on the beach at Cromer. You should never have let him in. Well, that was a story, Mum. You told that story, and now he's always here. A soldier? A soldier, is he? You never told me he was a soldier. Back from the wars, no job. Looking to make his fortune. Where's the boat? The boat's gone without us. We've got to get back. Mum, 
Mum, tell me where you are. Oh, not this palaver again. Tell me where you are. Logan Tower. Yeah, and who lives there? We do. So? I've had enough of this. Can't get a word of truth out of anyone, even my own daughter. Oh, now you remember I'm your daughter. Why won't anyone tell me what's going on? Mum, why don't you tell me what's going on, eh? Something's preying on your mind. Boats, sisters, meadowsweet. Honeysuckle, Boric. There, you see? What do they mean, those things? Spill the beans, come on. What's on my mind is that I'm trying to get to sleep. He slept through it. You must have heard something. She actually screamed. A full-on scream. I'm sorry. There was a conspiracy to make her miss her boat, and apparently I was in on it. Yeah, that's the hardest when they turn against you. No, Eric. The hardest is not sleeping because she wakes you up every couple of hours. The hardest is being around her when she's so scared she, you get scared yourself. You know I've got to go back this morning. I don't have a choice. I know. Oh, sweet of you to sleep over. I just want to blow off steam. Seriously, get here, Plucks. It's like on the plane when it says, make sure you've got oxygen yourself before helping your kids. Where's she going to be if you're too exhausted? She was talking to someone. Their memories are very vivid. She may have been talking to you. You as a little girl. You as she remembers you. That's a good thought, isn't it? Are you trying to put me in my happy place? <laughs> I'm trying to be your happy place. I swear, I could hear the other voice. What? Another voice. I could hear him, this soldier that she can see. Terry, you need a break. Come back with me. We'll sort out some kind of cover. We could pay someone if Bernie can't do oh, it. Oh, well, that's going to happen. I'm going to find out what's bothering her, what's haunting her. And I'm going to sort it out. You can't sort out dementia. She wants to tell us something. Like a family secret? I don't know, but I think she won't be able to rest easy. To die? You think she won't be able to die until she settles something, is that it? Yeah. She has to make her peace with something. Look, imagine your brain is Ikea. No, I'm not going to imagine that, Eric. Terry! Oh, she's calling me. There's a route through Ikea, isn't there? If you want something from kitchenware, you've got to pass through bedroom furniture or whatever. That's how your brain works. Routes. Pathways. Are you really mansplaining my own brain Terry. to me while my mother is calling? <sighs> imagine if you accidentally took a wrong turn and ended up in the Ikea warehouse instead. Everything there. Overwhelming amount of stuff. But not in any order. Or not in an order that you recognise. And actually, most of it in boxes, so you don't even know what it is. Seriously, she's calling. Uh, listen, don't get lost in there, OK? Don't get lost in the warehouse. Has he gone? Eric? Yeah, he's got work, so no, he's... the soldier boy, back from the wars, the one they sent to spy on us. Is he gone? Let's see. No one there, so, yeah, looks like he's gone. Even up and gone. It's just me and you now, Mum. And do you know what we're going to do? We're going to find out what it is that's haunting you like this, and we're going to sort it out. Nothing's haunting me that a good night's sleep won't miss. It's daytime, Mum. I was up all night with the girls. I know you're watching her every move. I'm past caring, to be honest. So where'd you go with these girls? Are they your sisters, these girls? On the little boat, as you well know. I thought you said he'd gone. He's still there. And are you happy he's still there, or sad he's still there? I'm trying to get some sleep. Uh, and these sisters, what are their names? Oh, shut it, Miss Marple. What's the quickest way home from here? Where are you, Mum? Logan Tower, flat four, tenth floor. Yeah, and who lives there? We do. So let's just sit here and talk. So, when you say you're by the lake, looking at the moonlight, that tells me that you're happy. When you start getting anxious about going home, even though you are home, well, I think that that means you're not happy. I'm concerned that the boat doesn't go without us. That's all. So what we got? Lake means happy. Man in the corner, that's not happy. You'll never catch us. And what about these sisters? Happy or sad? And the boat? Good night. 
All right, Mum. Good night. You know, mostly she's just recycling stuff from the telly. She'll say she was in Spain, and I'll be thinking, when did she go to Spain? And then I'll look up, what's it's on? Benny Dorm. Grieg's Piano Concerto by Grieg. What? Don't you remember? Borkham and Wise. I'm playing the right notes, but not necessarily in the right <laughs> order. That's Mum. <laughs> oh my God, what's that? Kids are playing in the stairs, same as we did when we were kids. Calm down. It's just a lift. Oh. This place is getting to both of us. I had a notion. Is this about the home? No. What? No, listen. You know the way she always ups her game when there's a visitor? Like when Eric came? The phone. What? Voice memos. Get her to record a voice memo. I bet she'll use her posh voice and everything. Like when people smile for the cameras. Maybe she'll make some sense. At the very least... We'll have a recording of her. Good afternoon. Just a little message from me to tell you all how I'm getting on. Who did she think she was talking to? No idea. I just said, well, listen. I'm very comfortable. I'm bedridden, unfortunately, here in Logan Tower, flat four, tenth floor. However... Terry is staying with me, which is very kind of her. She's doing a lovely job of looking after me. And Bernie does the same on different days. I'm very grateful. I know I can be difficult. I'm getting forgetful. And as I say, I can't do much for myself and nothing for anyone else. I sometimes get confused but I'm highly blessed in my daughters. Oh, I'm, I'm going to cry. See? She can still be reached. The life she's living. It's not how you'd want to live, but it is a life. She's trying to do something. Have you got more? Who is she that comes forth as the morning rising, fair as the moon, bright as the sun... Terrible as an army set in battle array. Oh, God. What the hell? I know. I thought she was having some kind of vision. It's just one of the Legion of Mary prayers. Listen. My soul glorifies the Lord. Oh, I see. It's the Angelus. The one. And my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. That was a scary moment. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy his name. More? This one. Listen. Honeysuckle, meadow sweet, speedwell, borage, lovage, loose strife, trefoil, tansy, pansy, parsley, saxifrage, and samphire. What? Wild flowers. She mentioned them before, but not a big list like this. Why? I don't know. I really want to know, but I don't know. It worked, anyway. She loved it, especially when I played it back. <laughs> she always loved the sound of her own voice. <laughs> she loved telling us stories. <laughs> Comfy now? Are we going to do more? More what, Mum? Or with the tape recorder. I'd like to finish it all. Oh, you're recording your memoirs, is that right? Well, that'll be a bit of an undertaking. <laughs> Shall we leave it till the morning? Isn't it morning yet? I seem to have been in this bed a long time. A year, Mum. I'm going to tuck you in and you're going to have a lovely sleep and in the morning Be we'll... good, won't you? When you grow up, don't do anything you'll regret. I'm already pretty grown up, Mum. Do you know how old I am? Shall I tell you a bedtime story, then, since it's bedtime? You always liked to cuddle up for a story, didn't you? <laughs> Go on, then. It all comes back at the end. 
all of it comes back. No, not all of it. What am I talking about? Days and days and days don't come back. They're gone. Can't recall them. But other days do. And listen, because this is the horror. You don't get to choose. You don't get to choose the days that come back. They just come. So when you grow up, Mum, I'm already days. Fill them with good things. Then whatever days come back at the end, you'll be all right. You won't have the likes of him to deal with. We know you're watching us. party downstairs last night. Oh, did you go? They were playing waltzes. Huh? I mean, reggae I could understand, but who has a Viennese waltz party? <laughs> Viennese people? Couldn't get a wink. That's funny. You should have gone down and complained. Imagine them in their ball gowns on the fourth floor Logan Towers. No, I think it's something bad. What, waltzes? She sees a man sitting in the corner watching her. Well, that's not good, is it? I mean, if that's a memory, what's it a memory of? Something not good. I keep telling you it doesn't have to be a memory. It could just as well be something off the X Factor. Oh, you know that's not true. Why are you trying to run away from this? Something bad happened to our mum. She had a breakdown. <laughs> exactly. Why does she have a breakdown? Why does anyone have a breakdown? Too much work. Not enough fun. Her husband ran off. How was she not a broken down? There's nothing mysterious about it. No one was arguing for equality back then. Women like her didn't have rights, so they had breakdowns instead. She was sent away for two years. What happened to her there? She never talked about it. She talked about it to me. What? When? Terry, I've seen her nearly every day since the kids left home. I haven't just shipped up now that things are... Oh, but that is not fair. No. Shipping up when things are difficult is what it's all about. Well, what does she say about it? Those years of... Oh, she suffered a lot, because the cocoa was always weak, and they taught her embroidery in a women-only sanatorium by the sea. She loved every bloody minute. Forgot we existed. It, exactly. She was trying not to talk about it. Why? It's not like she didn't love talking. Why didn't she write? We were too little to read. Stop playing hide-and-seek with me. Oh. oh, my God, do you know something? Are you keeping something from me? What? No, of course not. What's that? Oh, it's your phone. You must have left it in her room. Oh. <sighs> Come in. The band's playing. It was my phone, Mum. It's just my phone. What a night we had, eh? What a night! Wait till he finds out, eh? Another pair of shoes destroyed on the dance floor. You won't tell, will you, sisters? We're not your sisters, Mum. We're your daughters. You don't need to tell her that, Lever. What a night did you ever... We. So she's really very happy. Let's leave her that way, shall we? Yeah, but I just want to know... You know what, Terry? I came here to look after my mum, not listen to you looking for a thrill. What? There are no family secrets, no ghosts, just the grind of keeping her fed, keeping her clean and clean. Keeping her cheery, OK? And especially keeping her cheery. Well, I don't want her to be just cheery. I want her to be happy. I want her to tell us whatever it is she's trying to tell us. Fine. Now go home. I'm home. Anyone home? Eric? Eric! Eric! Calling Eric Mobile. Hello, love. 
lovely. You OK? Oh, I didn't mean to ring you. The phone did it. I was shouting your name. Where are you? Dublin. Just arrived. Dublin? Oh, I completely forgot you were going. The house is cold and empty. Right. I'm sorry. If you look in the fridge, is that really nice? Something of... weird happened. With Bernie? Last night. There was a party in the flats. You went to a party? No, of course not. It was down on the bottom floor. They were playing waltzes. How civilised. Well, why would they be playing Viennese waltz music at a party? To dance to. Maybe they all love Strictly. <sighs> I left my phone in Mum's bed, picked it up this morning. Three new voice memos. So your Mum's mastered the voice memo app. That's cheery. Listen, I'll call you back on the landline so you can hear it. All right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll just sit down. Hello? Are you there? Uh, hello. Right, can you hear this? Honeysuckle? Uh, yeah, I can hear fine. You played me this the other day. No, keep listening. Borage. Oh, listen, I looked stuff up about rescuers. And they, they used to do all these ladylike pursuits, embroidery, watercolours and botany. So that's where all that comes from. They go and find wildflowers. And... You're not listening. Right, I'm going to start it again. I thought you'd like to know that. Just listen, please. Honeysuckle. Meadow Can't you hear them? What? There. What? Orange. Listen. Lovely. You're not listening. I am listening, but I'm on the other side of the Irish Sea. Why don't you just tell me what I'm supposed to be listening for? There are other voices. Right, now listen to this one. Oh, Terry, All right, honestly. Well, take my word for it, then. There are other voices on this recording. How did they get there? Does she sleepwalk? Sleepwalk? What are you talking about? She doesn't daywalk. You know she hasn't been out of bed for months. Why are you even asking that? Listen again. Honeysuckle. Meadow sweet. Can you hear that? Honestly, Terry, this is pointless. Lovage. Well, you must have heard that. The splashing. There on the water. In a boat. Maybe play it to Bernie. I've just told you I had a row with Bernie. Anyway, it won't bother her. Because? Because she just puts earplugs in and drops a sleeping pill. Terry, you need a break. Oh, so I'm hearing things, am I? Is that what you're saying? No, but... Well, then how would a break make any difference? How is a break relevant? And by the way, how would a break even happen? It's some kind of interference. It's a phone. Phones pick things up. Interference? Yeah, I've been saying that. I said it to Bernie and she said, oh, yes, interference from Mum's own memories. But what if it's not? What if it's from somewhere else? Like the past, or, or some place... I meant from next door's telly. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> of course, that's it. Oh, Eric, I'm dreading tomorrow night. You not being there, being on my own. You nearly always do it on your own. Yeah, but I know if I rang you, you'd come over. Well, why not swap with Bernie? Then you'd have a night off and I'd be back when it was your turn. Uh, I could come over with I you. I just told you I had a row with Bernie. Why don't you ever listen? Oh, it's me. You know your name comes up when you ring, don't you? I'm nearly there. Sorry, I'm running a bit late. How far are you? Well, it normally takes me ten from here. If the lift's are working, I'll be there in fifteen. I'll go now. Oh, Right, well... Uh, She'll be fine for 15 minutes, if you really are 15 minutes. Yeah, I am. Could you not wait, though? I wanted to talk to you. I've got stuff to do. You're already late. It's only me, Mum. I bought some cake and Miss Marple. She's less spooky than Sherlock Holmes, eh? I don't know any Miss Marple. I don't want strangers seeing me in my nightwear. Is the kettle on? I'll do it now. Say hello to the man in the corner. Hello, man in the corner. Nice to see you, Terry. Oh. Oh, dear God. Oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to give you a fright. Oh, Father Burns. I called to see if I could do anything just as Bernie was leaving. She said if I could wait for you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I've given her communion and heard her confession and she's... <laughs> the lovely time. <laughs> she's, um, she's very proud of you two. You've been very good to her. Look, shall I put the kettle on? Oh. <laughs> I gave you a fright. No, no. Thanks for coming. She sometimes talks to a man in the corner, a man in black. Oh, no wonder I gave you a fright. <laughs> I think he's a soldier, not a priest. Oh. Soldier boy, she says. Well, my dad was the same. He used to see his grandmother. She's been trying to tell us something, Father. Oh, 
course she has. No, I mean something specific. Something that's haunting her. To settle matters before she goes. Yeah. I know this is hard, but, you know, this is what a good death is. Surrounded by loved ones. Time to say what needs to be said. This is a difficult time, but it's a valuable time too. Yeah, but she's not saying it. She's trying to say it, but I don't know what it is. Do you need to answer that? Uh, it's my hospital bleeper. I'm OK for a minute. It would make life so much easier if I could just... Oh! You think she's told me? You're not asking me to break the seal of the confessional? Oh, no, of course not. Well, yes, I am. Yeah, <laughs> I am asking that. <laughs> I just think she's trying to tell us something and she won't be able to let go until she's told us. Or she'll go with this unfinished and... and... OK, OK, look. She is trying to tell you something. Of course she is. Maybe it's not something that can just be put into words. It's not one of those fairy stories where you have to work out the riddle and you get your head chopped off. Look, just keep doing what you do, OK? You're doing the right thing. And that brings its own interest. I try to remember that you love it. Just checking you're all right. I'm doing what needs to be done. Another evening of being spooked. Have a drink, maybe? Well, there's no point in me being here at all if I'm out of my head, is there? Bye. Oh, yeah, thank you! See you soon! Yeah, the care is saying goodbye. Mum's ready for bed now. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm on my own with her now. Sheila will be on shift tomorrow. OK, yeah, thanks! <sighs> Just me and her. You should do the phone thing again where she talks into the voice memo. She liked that. It carved her down. Are you mad? It's exactly what freaked me out in the first place. Honestly, Eric, when you don't take in what I'm saying, it makes me feel so isolated. It freaked you out afterwards, but at the time it calmed her down. Don't worry about afterwards. I'll be there afterwards. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for listening. I'm here to tell you about... What? Oh, whatever you like. Why don't you tell us about something about you? What, what about when you went away to... Chroma. Well, you've never been to Chroma, I don't think, but you went away when we were little. What's the story there? I went away. Coco was terrible. Very weak. Would you like some Coco? Are, are you asking me for Coco? No, I'm asking the shadowy fellow if he'd like some cocoa in the corner. You would? My sister will bring you some. Or wine, if you'd prefer. Drink hearty while you can, my friend. You'll not eat tomorrow. You don't want to talk into this anymore, then? Leave now while you can. We'll never tell if you just go. Are you back from the war and still alive? Was it terrible? Are you not weary of living? I'll make us some cocoa. Bring wine, too, and chicken from the feast. Eat, drink, for tomorrow. You know the rest. Who's there? Who's there? Who is that? I know your parents. Go away. If you think we're scared, we're not.
How's that cocoa coming along? Oh, yeah, won't be long. Mum, can you hear water? Is there a leak somewhere? It's just the lake. I love the lake. No, 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 but I can hear it. Must be a leak. Can I put the light on? What? Where's that coming from? Oh, oh, don't worry, Mum, it's just interference. The phone picks things up, Eric said. Love this one. All my sisters love this. And my dancing shoes. I'll unplug the radio. And the telly. <laughs> if I can hear you, you can hear me. Leave my mother alone. Leave her alone. We're dancing. Leave her in peace. Wait. There's one extra. He's found us. It was fun while it lasted. Mum? 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 I saw Annie by one of those coincidences which in retrospect we can see was pure grace just a day before she passed away. She talked about her daughters. She was very grateful of how they rallied round. You know, when people <laughs> fade away like this, when to say it the way Annie would have said it, they lose their marbles. It can be hard. And we think it's cruel, and we wish it was over. It was very clear to me that this phase of Annie's life was valuable. Maybe some of the most important days she lived. The girls saw more of each other. They remembered and rebooted, if you like, that strong childhood bond. She didn't. They were brought back to themselves. I don't feel like it. They gained. And that's Annie's last gift. That day she took communion and I heard her confession. And then she said this amazing thing. She said, praise the Lord. Which is a phrase she'd have said every day. But she meant it. And she said, Every living thing should praise the Lord. And she went on to list things. Wild flowers, saxifrage and sweet peas. And I know nothing about wild flowers. She'd have been better off listing different brands of chocolate as far as I was concerned. <laughs> and at the time I was thinking, is she going to name every plant in creation? Because I've got to get to the hospital. But it's really stayed with me. Every living thing, until its very last breath, including Annie, should breathe praise. Oh, lovely eulogy. Thank you. It's not true. I mean, Bernie, for a start. Don't talk to her. We've talked enough. Thank you. Thank you. Do we not see her again for a good long time? It wasn't easy, but you both did the right thing. Except that it had its bad moments, but in the end... I you think both... my mother died in fear. What? Good evening, everybody. Thank you for listening. I'm here to tell you about... What? I want you to listen. And to listen carefully. Well, whatever you like. Why don't you tell us about something about you? What about when you went away to... Who was this? The night she died. Chroma. She sounds you cheery. You don't Chroma, I don't think. There's only me But you went her, away when we were little. Listen. Would you like a little cocoa? No, Coco. I thank you. For I must stay awake and watch or lose my head in the morning. Wine? No wine. I thank you. For I must stay awake and watch or lose my head in the morning. Chicken from the feast? Perhaps. Just a little chicken. Just a little wine? Perhaps just a little wine. You don't want to talk into this anymore, then? That's you. Well, that's what I'm saying. I was there. I was in the room. I remember this. It was only me and her in the room. Leave while you can. We'll never tell if you just go. Are you back from the war and still alive? Was it terrible? Are you not weary of living? You'll not catch us, my friend. I am back from the war. The war 
did not destroy me, nor will you. I am not weary of living, and I will catch you. There was no one there. Just me and her. She was bargaining with some ghost. Ghosts don't show up on voice memos, love. Well, then what's that? You've only played 30 seconds of it. It's five minutes long. I'm scared to hear what happens next. I'm here. This is the last you'll hear of her. There was a king. It's bedtime, so I'm telling you a story. He had 12 daughters. I'm probably going to lose the thread again here. The king loved his daughters... But they drove him out of his mind because every day he bought them new shoes. Stop. Stop it. What? What's wrong? Stop it. Children's shoes are a fierce price. And every morning, even though they'd been asleep in bed, their shoes were back. She's telling us a story. She just wanted to tell us a story. She hadn't had you and Bernie at her bedside since you were little. It's me, Terry. I know, I keep telling you your name comes up. Bernie, please. Look, I answered, didn't I? What do you want to say? I'm listening. I don't want you to listen to me. I want you to listen to Mum. Can you come over? You ready? Is this the big secret? Yes, it is. So he was worried. My Bernie worries. <sighs> I've got plenty to worry about. So he sent out a proclamation. Is that I know right this word? story. It, it's the dancing princesses. To anyone who could find out what happened. So a soldier answered that, and the sisters were very nice to him. They said, Would you like a little cocoa? And he said, No cocoa. I thank you. For I must stay awake and watch, or lose my head in the morning. <laughs> it's her, doing the voice. She was always good at the voices. What do you mean? How about a little wine? No wine, I thank you. For I must stay awake and watch, or lose my head in the morning. She's doing the voice herself. So he pretended to eat the chicken and drink the wine, but he knew all along that they were drugged. Then he pretended to be asleep, but he saw through his half-closed eyes when they woke up. There was a door that took them out of their beds. Where was that? In the pillow, probably. <laughs> anyway times that woman had when the king thought she was in her bed. She flew across an underground lake in a boat shaped like a swan. And then there was dancing like in the old days when she was lovely, waltzing and what have you. That's why her shoes were finished. That's why she had to stay in bed all day because she'd been dancing all night. And then this island had flowers like you've never seen. Flowers like they had when they sent her away when she was young. Flowers she'd never seen until that day. And she learnt their names from a book. But no one else she knew was aware of these names. So she felt like those flowers had been invented that very day and she was giving them their names. Honeysuckle, Meadow Sweet, Speedwell, Borage, Loveage, Loose Strife, Trefoil. This was a Radio 4 production. And if you enjoyed it, find more gripping audio drama on BBC Sounds. Hello, I'm Gemma Kearney and I want to tell you about Don't You Forget About Me, a brand new hub for great music documentaries from BBC Radio 4. Whatever your musical taste, we've got you covered. Whether you want to discover the cult of Aphex Twin or appreciate the genius of Jeff Buckley. My whole philosophy or my whole discovery is that every emotion has a sound to it. Listen to old favourites and make new musical discoveries. I don't have the answers and you shouldn't either. And I'm going to make it really complicated just to prove that. Just search for Don't You Forget About Me in BBC Sounds and subscribe now.